Hey people, what's going on? It's it's Wednesday um, of January. The first month of 2019 is just about gone. The time just flies, flies, flies. Yeah, it's cold, cold, cold. I hope that you guys are okay. Today is Phil Collins' birthday. Happy birthday, Phil Collins. My first introduction to him, I heard him before I had heard of Genesis. I found this as a cutout as a teenager, Flaming Youth, Arc 2. That's Phil down there. This was a band he was in before he uh, joined Genesis. Uh, a pop band, really, not a progressive rock band. Um, a bit of a concept album. I really didn't care for this for a long time, um, mainly because as a kid I was looking for something in particular, and if I didn't hear it, then you know what I'm saying? But uh, this is a good album. Changes, Space Child, which uh, is uh, Phil's solo vocal on here. Good song. Let me talk. There's some, several things I hope I don't forget. But I want to acknowledge and thank Discus Music for letting me represent by sending me um, releases. This is a label run by Martin Archer. A saxophonist, English dude, who I've not met, but whose sensibilities I appreciate. I think I'd probably like him if I could meet him. This is a new thing called Das Rad with Martin. And <clears throat> where's some of the other people? Steve Dinsdale. Jan Gilhuli, Nick Robinson. The way I want to describe this is it's, to me, it's in the family of gong music or cos, not cosmic in the German sense, but uh, that's why I've been kind of waiting because there's elements that remind, not really, don't remind me of, but it's got that cosmic element of rising and expansiveness, but it also has a rocking element to it. Not all the time, okay? East of Eden comes to mind too, not surprisingly to me, actually, I hear it. Um, not just in the sax playing at times, but in the actual music. I really like this. Frankly, my favorite piece right away on here is Fernwe One, which is a short kind of an, I don't know, etude or it's a quiet guitar piece. It's beautiful. I, I just want to really push Das Rad. Back in the day, we had labels like Futura, Deram, Harvest, uh, Nepenthe, all those really cool labels. You know, Ohm, or rather, or even their early version. Discus is a is a modern label in that, I won't say tradition, but they represent a body of work that's, that's, that's uh, significant and um, doesn't get much play in the quote-unquote mainstream media. I'll leave a link to Discus Music. Find out about Das Rad. You can hear everything. In the last week or so, we've lost uh, more musicians, and we're, we're at this, this at that age. It sucks. We just lost James Ingram, singer, a singer, great singer. Um, came to my attention through his work with Quincy Jones. What's the song on here he does? Just Once, then he had um, uh, 100 Ways, several other big hits. Beautiful voice, he also wrote some hits I think he wrote one of Michael Jackson's hits. Uh, significant musical loss, James Ingram. We also unfortunately lost Paul Whaley, the drummer of Blue Cheer. Now once again, because of um, my background and being a rocker or being turned on by rock and roll, um, this one I felt. This is my second copy. But this is Blue Cheer's album, Outside Inside, came out in 1968. 
I was fortunate enough to, to get a copy almost right away because this album tanked. They had that hit Summertime Blues, and I think that the, the uh, industry just assumed that they had a breadwinner, so they probably made way too many copies of this, and this cut out right away. So I got a copy of this for like 50 cents, maybe in 1969 or 1970. And I love the cover. Great psychedelic cover. It's the inside too. My original copy, I tore this, I tore this part off and put it on my wall because it just impressed me so much. See, these guys, along with MC5, these are the bands to me that are the beginnings of heavy metal, punk, hard rock, MC5, Blue Cheer, Early Deep Purple. Those are the bands. Blue Cheer, some of you old folks remember that Cheer was a, a, a dish soap. Blue Cheer was a particular brand. But the band was named after a very well, uh, um, a type of LSD that was synthesized, that was made popular by Owsley Stanley, who happens to be the uncle of Mark Stanley, who I've been playing music with. Mark Stanley and Carla Duratz, Double Dreaming. Mark Stanley Owsley is Mark's uncle. Mark could tell you some amazing stories. I'd, lo I'd love to meet Mark in person and just hang out with him. So there's a connection. There's a per, you know, six degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever that shit is. I can do that with a lot of people. So there's a connection to Blue Cheer to my friends. Rest in peace, Paul Whaley. Um, I, I love the band, Vincibus Eruptum. I, I still remember when Summertime Blues came out. It was a, it was like, whoa, what is this? Moving into the future. I hadn't played this for a long time. Didn't my memory of it was not good. It had been that long. Side two of this is very psychedelic and cool. New improved blue cheer. Rest in peace, Paul Whaley. A couple more musicians. Clive Stevens, English sax player, jazz musician who played with Lee Konitz, Konitz but also was in Manfred Mann for a while. Cle Clive Stevens passed away, uh, I think, about a week ago. This is a monster fusion album. Everyone from John Abercrombie to Billy Cobham. Um, Ralph Towner is on here. Uh, Rick Laird. Harry Williamson. Harry Wilkinson, rather. Great album. And then the other one. Uh, Voice to Uranus. Clive Stevens. We had actually become friends on Facebook. He noticed my posts where I talk about social issues uh, after I'd, we'd friended, and then he started posting on my post with similar, not views, but similar concerns. So Clive Stevens was a friend of mine. And then another, do I still have an album out? Because I, yeah, I was listening to this band. Come to find out that Ingo Bischoff, the keyboardist of Kron, also he was in Guru Guru and Cartago has passed away. I love the German band, Kwan. Remember I was just telling you about them? Funky Germans? He had a very un um, distinct synthesizer setting that he used a lot, so you always could tell it was Ingo. Blue Vinyl Harvest, isn't that nice? It's, it's, it's a shame to lose all these, these cool musicians, but the clock marches on. I'm gonna shut down right quick. <clears throat> cold. Thank you for sharing with my um, glee with winning this award for best punk because it's incongruous or it doesn't fit. Punk is not about awards, you know what I'm saying? Some people might even think I'm uh, hypocritical. Not at all. We, RAF is a band because we're a band and we're still together after 35 years because we're just a bunch of misfits that found each other and we we just we just we just love each other and we play like it's our last day every time we play we play like we're it's the last thing we're going to do i love the fact that many local bands do not want to play after us on a show 
And he said, well, we don't want to play after Ari up. There's nothing left. I love the fact that several of the more recent shows where REF has opened up for touring well-known punk bands that I'll look out in the audience and see the headlining band watching us with a worried look on their face. Matter of fact, when we opened up for MDC recently, um, John comes up afterwards and he had a real worried look. He says, what'd you guys do that to us for? <laughs> I just cracked up. I said, man, you better get up there and do your job. I hope everyone is safe. It's cold and crazy in this world. I ain't going to talk about the madness of politics. It's going to go on. Nothing's going to get better. This is all by design. It is. See ya.